Hi there, <clears throat> Lindsay here. All right, so this is going to be the video about um, how to make Jesus your Lord and Savior of your life and how to gain salvation through Jesus Christ. Um, so maybe you've been thinking about, you know, maybe God is calling you and you've been thinking about making Jesus, you know, the Lord of your life and becoming a follower of Jesus. Um, and today is, I want to go over with you a few reasons uh, why you should know about Jesus and um, how to gain salvation. So, <clears throat> we, we have all fallen short and sinned and we are imperfect and the consequence of sin is eternal death. So, um, but we have a hope because God the Father has sent us a Savior named Jesus. And because of Jesus, we are able to have salvation from our sins and, and that resurrection into eternal life. So... Um, thankfully, we don't have to worry about, you know, perishing forever. We can have a beautiful, perfect, perfect happiness, perfect love, perfect life, an e everlasting life with God and Jesus forever once we make Jesus the Lord and Savior of our life. Um, it's the biggest, most important decision you could ever make because it's a decision that will last for eternity. And um, even now in our life now, it, our life as Christian, once we make Jesus the Savior and Lord of our life, um, accept Him as Savior and Lord of our life, we, um, we, tra we change drastically. We become a new creation in our spirit. So it's, it's, it's a miraculous thing that is through, done through the spirit, spiritual transformation, um, but it even shines on the outside and into our lives, and other people can see the transformation being made. So um, I want to invite you today to consider uh, being saved, and also what to do after, I mean, what to do now that you become saved, or if you're saved already, what do you do now um, as a Christian? How does this change your life, and what should you do to become a better Christian and to follow Jesus the right way? All right, so thank you again for joining. Um, so again, yes, you know, when you're considering uh, being saved and accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, you're committing. It's a very big commitment, an eternal commitment, um, and... Is something that you should take very seriously um, so you know really think about this and about you know it, even you can even pray and ask Jesus to um, to open your heart to him um, let's go ahead and start with reading Acts 16 verse 29 through 31 So, I'm sorry. Uh, so he asked for his, I'm sorry, so he asked for lights and rushed in and seized with trembling and he fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to get saved? They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will get saved, you and your household. So, if people ask, if you're asking, well, how do I become saved? What am I supposed to do? The most important, the first and most important thing to do is to believe in Jesus. And that is what we mean by putting faith in Jesus. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He did come to die for our sins and is resurrected 
and seated at the right hand of God. And he is our Savior. He forgave, He has forgiven us of all of our sins and that he is the Lord, Son of God. So that is the first most important. That's the, that's the way you become saved is believing in Jesus. Um, now we have to acknowledge that in order to be saved, we have to acknowledge that we have sinned because the point of being saved is gaining salvation. Um, so gaining salvation from our sins and our sin nature that we are born into. Um, so we have to acknowledge that we've sinned. Uh, let's read First John chapter 1, 8 through 10. If we make the statement we have no sin, we are misleading ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous as to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we make the statement we have not sinned, we are making him a liar and his word is not in us. So, unfortunately, we are all naturally born into imperfect nature and, you know, we have you know evil and the and bad it exists in our world and it exists in our hearts naturally so um we cannot gain an eternal life because that the the consequence of of this evil sin nature is um you know this tainted nature that we're born into the consequence is death so we needed Jesus to be our Savior to save us. So um, we believe in Jesus and make him our Savior. We are, um, we are acknowledging that we have sin um, and that we need, us, and need Jesus as our Savior. So we can read Romans 3, 22 through 23. Um, and we can read about um, the law. So the law in, in the Bible actually talks about bringing conviction um, because where there's no law there's no sin <clears throat> but the law was given to us and that we are made pe to be found guilty because we can't complete 100 percent of the law and since God is is holy we have in order to gain salvation um, by by spiritual means we have to complete the law 100% but because we are imperfect we can't so there's no way for us to complete the law you know through our works so only Jesus was able to to be perfect and fulfill the law and he talks about this in Matthew 5:17. so he fulfilled the law in our place um, and therefore, we are no longer held under the law. And you can you can read about commandments in the law in the first books of the Bible. Uh, Exodus twenty two through seventeen talks about the Ten Commandments. You know, all of these things we we fall short on. But Jesus was perfect, and so he he was able to fulfill the law in our place. So we are no longer seen in a sin nature once we accept Jesus as our Savior. But we are seen by God through Jesus' righteousness. So we are seen through righteousness. We are made in His Spirit a righteous creation, a new righteous creation. Um, so, of course, we still sin daily, being human and imperfect, but Jesus has already taken, you know, forgiven us of every sin we're going to make and all sin, and so God doesn't count that against us anymore when we accept Jesus as our Savior. Um, so let's read five, uh, Matthew 5. 17. Um, so it says, Do not think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy but to fulfill. That's Jesus talking. So he didn't get rid of the law, but he fulfilled it. So he made, he made us um, to be able to Okay, so since we are made righteous in His, uh, in His spirit, we are covered in His 
uh, blood of his sacrifice so we made righteous and he um, fulfilled the law in our place so therefore he's fulfilled the law not destroyed it but fulfilled it so we're still obeying the goodness and righteousness and holiness of God um, we're just no longer condemned by it so Romans 10 9 let's go ahead and read that because Romans 10 9 uh, explains something very vital in the process of being saved for if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and exercise faith in your heart that that God raised him from the dead you will be saved so we need to believe have faith that again Jesus is the Son of God and that he did come to forgive us our sins but that he's also resurrected and he's living because God's, God raised him from the dead. And we need to declare it with our mouth. So we need to pro, uh, proclaim it to other people. Um, Jesus says, you know, if you don't, if you deny me in front of others, I will deny you. But if you accept me, I will accept you. So um, we, it's so important that we speak about who, you know, our faith in Jesus and our, our faith um, in God as a Christian now to others also because we need to teach them so that they can be saved as well um, okay so then let's go ahead and look at John 3 6 so we're going to be moving into baptism of the Holy Spirit what has been born from the flesh is flesh and what has been born from the Spirit is spirit so we um when we in order to be saved and enter the kingdom of god as jesus says we need to be baptized of water and the holy spirit so um we are baptized in holy spirit being born again so just like jesus was born, was conceived through holy spirit um made holy and righteous that is the same thing that happens to us um, we die to our sin nature we die um, with Jesus's death and then we are raised up again and born again through his resurrection in Holy Spirit made made righteous in a new a new creation in our spirit so we need to ask God for right uh, we need to ask God for Holy Spirit and he, he tells us to ask him for Holy Spirit we need to ask him to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and we can um, we can read Acts chapter 2, 38 as well. Because Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter said to them, Repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit. So this is so. This is this is so essential and vital to have um, the Holy Spirit with us. And Jesus sent the Holy Spirit as our advocate to to help us to grow closer to God and to live in the holy nature we're supposed to as His followers. Um, and then First Peter chapter one twenty three explains how we are no longer of a seed that is you know going to be destroyed and in, in, in eternal death but now we are born again in the spirit that will live it is everlasting so we need to ask um, God for Holy Spirit and then um, let's discuss more about becoming a new creation so like I mentioned before we are a new creation um, once we are resurrected in the spirit so let's read 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in union with Christ, he is a new creation. The old things passed away. Look, new things have come into existence. When we are one with Christ, the old self, the sin nature and the old self that is of the world, 
passes away and dies. And then we are we are resurrected in spirit, born again into a new nature, into a new creation, just in union with Christ, so made holy and new and righteous. That's really, um, that's so just special because we are no longer slaves, and, and Jesus talks about it, no longer slaves to our sin nature and to the, we're, we're no longer chained to bad things or sin um, or the power of, of um, you know, death or even evil. We, we have overcome with Jesus because through Jesus um, so it's just really special to know that you're just a new creation completely um, and then what we need to do once we become saved so once we once we put our faith in Jesus and you know we need to proclaim him to others we need to accept the Holy Spirit ask for the Holy Spirit accept him receive him and then we need to um, be baptized. So, <clears throat> the reason why it's so important to be baptized is, and it baptized in the Holy Spirit, but um, also baptized in water. So, what is baptism and why is that so important? So, water baptism is a deeply sacred action that is the resemblance um, of your faith and the cleansing of sin and becoming new creation in Christ. So when we go in the water, we die in spirit. In the we die in the in the flesh. Actually, we die in the flesh. We res, we when we rise up out of the water, we become a new creation in spirit. So um, when we go in the water, our old person in sin nature is buried with Christ, and when we come up. We have new new life in Christ, resur uh, resurrection of Jesus. So um, it is pretty much baptism of water is symbol of what's happened to us spiritually. And Jesus was even baptized in the water. So it's a very sacred um, <clears throat> action to do, and it's something we need to do um, as you know when we get saved. Um, and also, um, there are people that baptize differently. Uh, baptism in, is actually, um, in Greek, means submerging. So it's good to know that the um, when we get baptized in water, we should completely be submerged, not just um, not just sprinkled. Or we need to be submerged in the water. Um, <clears throat> so, but when you get baptized, make sure this is truly what you want to live for, Jesus. And take that holy step and that sacred step forward in your relationship with God because baptism is a very special symbolism of what's happened to you in spirit as well. And that you're proclaiming that you're going to be living your life for Jesus now. Um, Alright, so now we move to the subject of no, no more condemnation. So being saved um, means that you are no longer condemned. Um, this is so important for me to share with you because a lot of people, um, even I, you know, when I when I first started trying to um, walk with Christ, I would get confused a lot by this because it's a really effective lie and deception it's condemnation basically so let's read um, let's read John chapter 3 36 to better explain about this so that we do not be deceived and that we are able to live in the freedom that Jesus wanted us to because he said himself the truth sets you free all right so yeah chapter 336 
The one who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and the one who disobeys and rejects the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So, what that's saying is, once you believe in Jesus, and you truly believe in him, and you make him the Savior and Lord of your life, you are no longer condemned to eternal death. You will have eternal life. The only sin, every sin that you've ever done has been forgiven already. Jesus forgave it all and conquered it all at the cross once he, once he was crucified and resurrected. So you're no longer condemned into eternal death. He took that for you. He took that already. He was in your place for you. So you don't have to do that. You don't have to die and suffer for your sins anymore. Jesus has already um, saved you. You are not condemned. The only sin that you can do, well, um, the one sin that you can do, basically, you're you're you are deciding not to follow Jesus. Because if you decide not to make Jesus of your life, then you are not saved, and then you will be um, condemned to eternal death. But if but once you already make Jesus the Savior, you are not going to be condemned unless you later on again re deny Jesus and reject him. And um, if you reject him and who he truly is. So you do not need to live under condemnation anymore. Um, and and the reason I'm, I'm bringing up about that is because... <sighs> Like, for example, in my walk, um, in the beginning, I, I would constantly, um, I, it actually separated me, uh, it actually made me stray away from the faith for a while, because I would, I would constantly catch myself convicting myself, oh, I sinned again, oh, I did this, oh, I can't be, I'm not good enough, but remember, we're not counted toward right uh, our works are not counted toward it's our faith that is counted toward righteousness and it's Jesus that's the righteousness that that it's Jesus that makes us righteous not our acts not you know so our sins are not held against us once we you know are once we accept that we have sinned but Jesus is forgiven us so sitting there convicting myself and constantly putting myself down or or um, holding myself up to some expectation and standard actually was working against me. And it works against us because we're not held under the law anymore. That's what the law would do. Um, but because, remember, we're not held under the law, right? Jesus already fulfilled that. So we don't need to... The law condemns us, yes. But since we're not held under that, we, we have no condemnation. So yes, we do need to live holy for Jesus. We don't need to sin. This is not, it's okay to sin now. It's okay to do whatever. No. We need to live holy for God and live for Him. Obviously, keep His commandments like Jesus said. But we don't need to constantly condemn ourselves, convict ourselves. Because we're still imperfect in the human flesh. And this world is imperfect. So, so we're still going to make mistakes and we're still going to sin. But we need to be reassured that we are saved through Jesus. Through Jesus' righteousness. And having faith in Him, we're saved. So no condemnation. So, you know, kick that stupid lie out the door because it's not true. Um, Romans 10.4 is a great uh, verse to read. And Titus 3.5. Um, let's go ahead and read that too. Just so we can build up on understanding that our, our, our uh, actions is not what saves us. It is not our self-righteousness because there's no, we couldn't do enough. Anyway. Um, yeah, Titus ooh. Alright, so it says, 
not because of any righteous works we had done, but because of his, Jesus' own mercy. He saved us by means of the bath that brought us to life and by making us new by Holy Spirit. So, yeah, we are, we are made righteous through Jesus' righteousness, not our own, not our own actions. So that's what it means when we say we are made righteous by our faith or we're saved through faith. It's because we're putting faith in Jesus' righteousness, which covers us. All right, so, um, you know, Galatians 3, 23 through 25. Uh, I actually will go ahead and read that too because that explains about not being held under the law. So, 3, 23, 25. However, before the faith arrived, we were being guarded under law, but handed over to custody, looking to the faith that was about to be revealed. So the law became our guardian, leading to Christ so that we might be declared righteous through faith. But now that the faith has arrived, we are no longer under a guardian. So we're no longer under the law. We have been declared righteous through faith. So that's confirmed right there in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, 8 through 9 also um, is through God's undeserved kindness, which is grace, that we are saved, not our own doing. So we can be free from worrying about being perfect because we do want to become more Christ-like, that's our goal, but we are not held under trying to be perfect because Jesus already, we're seen as through Jesus and Jesus is perfect. So we're pretty much seen as perfect through Jesus when we have faith in him. Um, Hebrews 11.1. 1. This is explaining you um, what faith is and why it's important to know about it. Because um, if you're like, well, okay, I get it. I believe, I put my faith and I believe in Jesus. Um that he saved me from my sins um, but Jesus so just is spiritual you can't really see it but you can feel it but that spiritual transformation just happened once you put your faith in him and and this is understandable as we can see in like um, Galatians 2 16 and Genesis uh, 15 6 as well as Romans chapter 4 these are all uh, scriptures that talk about Abraham being the right, the first righteous man, as he put faith in God. And God, once he put faith in God, God counted that uh, right as him. I'm sorry, God counted him as righteous because he put faith in him. So we can see that reflected as us putting faith in Jesus. That's making us righteous because of Jesus' righteousness through Jesus' righteousness. So just like Abraham put faith in God, um, we put faith in Jesus and, um, and God, and that's counted toward right, that's counted righteousness toward us, all right? So that's the purpose of having faith in Jesus. That's the purpose and importance of believing in Jesus, and that's what that means when we say to believe and put faith in Jesus Christ, is to believe in him and now you have become a new creation and you're made righteous so that's what that means and that's what happens once you believe in Jesus and make him your Lord and Savior all right so you're already a new creation you're made righteous through Jesus it's amazing and this talks about um, once we're saved we have freedom from sin that's Romans 6 6 through 7 let's go ahead and read these scriptures actually um, so we can really we can really draw upon how how amazing this transformation is um, and that it frees us. So Romans 6, 6 through 7. Alright? For we know that our old person was nailed to the cross along with Jesus in order for our sinful body to be made powerless so that we should no longer on, go on being slaves to sin. For the one who has died has been acquitted from his sin. Moreover, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. 
For we know that Christ, now that he has been raised up from the dead, dies no more. Death is no longer master over him. For the death that he died, he died with reference to sin once for all time. But the life that he lives, he lives with reference to God. Likewise, you consider yourselves to be dead with the reference to sin, but living with reference to God by Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not let sin continue to rule as king in your mortal bodies, so that you should obey their desires. Neither go on presenting your bodies to sin as weapons of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead, also your bodies to God as weapons of righteousness. For sin must not be master over you, seeing that you are no, not under law, but under undeserved kindness, which is grace. You're under grace, not law. So, those are actually, <laughs> I read 6 through um, 14 instead of 6 through 7. But I wanted to because it really explains we're not slaves of death. Um, yeah, we're not slaves of death or sin anymore. We're not held under the law. It just kind of explains, again, our freedom through grace um, and not through works and then our freedom through death um, you can actually read John 5 29 it talks about that too although we kind of already just said that as well um, freedom from the evil of the world that's John 16 33 um, let's go ahead and read that one and this again is through Jesus you know Jesus talks about I have you know conquered the world so it says I have said these things, this is Jesus talking, I have said these things to you so that by means of me you may have peace in the world, you will have tribulation, but take courage, I have conquered the world. So we don't even have to worry about the evil in this world or, you know, the tribulation we go through. Um, we can read Galatians 1, 4, and then we can read 1 John 3 through 8. Um, let's go ahead and read 1 John 3 through 8. And this is about us being free from the devil as well, so we don't have to worry about the um, the powers of darkness over us as well. So the one who practices sin originates with the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. But for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to break up the works of the devil. So he has conquered the devil as well. And that is what we need to do as well as Christians is to um, reject the works of evil because we don't need to be serving. Since Jesus is our king, we serve him in our life, not our desires, not the, war, not the wicked ways of the world or the devil or the powers of um, evil and darkness. Um, so we've, we, we have freedom from all of these things. They have no power over us. So why are we, we there's no point in, in serving something that doesn't have power over us. Also because Jesus is our king now, we serve him. And he has the power over these and he is against those. So if he's against them, you, you're against them as well. If he's for something, you're for that as well. So, um, so yeah, we're free of what sin, death. And the, the evil in the world and the devil and the dar darkness, the power of darkness. And we can read Hebrews 2, 14 through 15 as well uh, for confirmation in that. Nothing can separate us from God's love. So there's nothing that is, there's nothing more powerful than the love that God has for us. So we, we are free from all these things. Nothing has power over us anymore. And we can read that in Romans 8, 31 through 39. So with all this being said, um, it sounds just absolutely wonderful. And, you know, living the Christian life and living for God is so beautiful and so amazing. And um, you really you really come to find that even like it said even through the tribulations you have peace because that peace is not of the world and it can't really be explained through words but it's an amazing peace in life through um through jesus and and through walking in spirit as he teaches us so um so you say okay i'm saved so what does that really actually mean now um how how does how does how do I differ 
as a Christian from, you know, everyone else. Because we, Jesus talks about that. We are, um, we are sanctified. We're sanctified people. We are, we are taken out of this world. We're set apart from the world, pretty much. Um, so we, we're not of the world, so we live differently, right? So what does it actually mean to be a Christian? And I also think this is so important for you to realize because, unfortunately, a lot of people, well, they get saved, which is great, but then they don't actually fulfill living um, the life that, you know, God purposed for us because people don't actually teach them how to, how you're supposed to live for God. And God wants us to serve Him you know, there's there's a there's a right way to to serve God that He desires from us and to live for Him, and it's so vital that you learn this. And once you start living this way, you will see an amazing abundance and transformation in your life because Jesus and God is working in your life and through you. And because God's working through you, uh, you're you're letting God's light shine, and then people can see the change as well. And it actually will bring people to be saved as well and um, you'll you'll see amazing things because because God's working through your life but you have to live according to his way and he's and Jesus says if you love me you will obey my commandments so let's find out how to live um, for God so now that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're ready to be his follower um, Let's reflect back on how we don't want to be living in sin. Of course, we, we realize, you know, we're not slaves to sin anymore. We shouldn't be working sin, but we should be working righteousness. So um, we can read Romans uh, chapter 6 because that really explains about that. Uh, Paul was really trying to get that point across that this is not... Um, this is not a pass for you to, to just, oh, it's okay if I'm imperfect, I can be imperfect. No, um... We, we shouldn't, you know, condemn ourselves, but we also need to strive to be holy just as he is. So, um, <clears throat> you know, Jesus commands us, Jesus commands us to practice the commandments and, I mean, his commandments, to forgive those who have done wrong to you, to love others as yourself and as Jesus loves you, and to love God above all with all your heart, all your mind, spirit, and strength, and um, and these are just um, a, you know a few commandments that Jesus gave us. But um, we are to strive to to do these things, and and He says the law is you know the rest of the law hangs on these commandments, because if you love your neighbor, you're not going to want to steal from them. You're not going to want to hurt them, and you know so on. So. That's, those are the two most important commandments to keep. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and read the first Peter, and that's chapter 1, 15 through 16. So first Peter chapter 1, 15 through 16. Like the Holy One who called you, Become holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, You must be holy as I am holy. So just as Jesus is, we need to be more Christ-like, so we need to be striving to be holy as well. Um, <clears throat> and also, another important um, <clears throat> point here being made is that the Bible talks about faith is dead without action. And it's, it's actually... Um, goes hand in hand because so James 2 14 through 17 you know explains faith without action is dead um, like you can say oh I believe what you're saying but if you're not if you're not acting then you're just speaking word you're speaking hot air right so I think we we all kind of have heard that um, so you understand that if you if you just if you're just saying oh I believe it or whatever if you really did, you would actually act upon your belief. Um, so, it's the same thing. Um, 
want and, and and it's like i said it goes hand in hand because if you really do make jesus christ your lord uh accept him i'm sorry as lord and savior of your life then you're gonna want to serve him you're gonna want to do good you're gonna want to obey him and do good things because his spirit's going to be living in you and you can actually when you especially when you really start walking in spirit you you actually can feel holy spirit um grieve when when you go against what's right and you know better so um <clears throat> like i you know like i say you know once you become a christian it's so important that you start acting that if you have bad habits start replacing them with good habits um, you know, change is bound to happen, and transformation, which is why I say, you know, people will start seeing the transformation in you, because they're going to start seeing how you have become, um, have you become more, more Christ-like, and it will really inspire other people, and Jesus asks us to do that, let our light shine, so that m all people can see, um, your good works, and, um, glorify God so yeah you're not gonna save yourself through your good works but you're bringing glory to God by by doing good works um, and then those two um, commandments that I had mentioned a minute ago I, I just want to give you the scripture so you can definitely read that it's Matthew 22 36 to 40 and then like you see here I mark uh, chapter 8 verse 35 um, you know we we when we become Jesus followers we are to deny who we are and follow him so, because again, he's Lord of all. He's Lord. He's your Lord. So whatever he says, it goes. And it's the best for us. And once we accept that, that means we're not serving ourselves either. We're serving Jesus. We're serving God above all. And, um, okay. So the next thing um, that we need to do as um, a Christian is read the Bible every day. Now, I know this kind of seems like, well, duh. <laughs> but um, it's actually funny because a lot of people don't realize how important it is to read the Bible. Um, and some people don't even want to because it seems like a huge book that, you know. And then it's hard to understand, you know, um, everything that it's talking about which is why you know there's bible studies and stuff but when you start asking the holy spirit and jesus and god to talk to you through the holy spirit to reveal to you the truth and, and what the bible means you will start understanding it and it will start making sense to you and it will actually breathe life into you because the bible says the word of god is alive and the word being the Bible. Well, the Bible is alive in Jesus. <clears throat> the word is Jesus, and the Bible is, um, is, it's alive. And it really brings edification, meaning spiritual improvement, to you. So it's so essential. You, you, you have to read the Bible to learn how to grow as a Christian, to come to know God, and to come to know, um, the kind of life he wants us to live and then you know there's the promises he's promised us and the wisdom he gives us and um how to you know better our lives and how to draw close in in his spirit um and it teaches us to walk in spirit and um i mean and it even talks about uh the future what to expect when we're you know waiting for jesus's return so and then, you know, it gives so many examples about how we should live um, based on the people of God, even in the Old Testament. So, I mean, I actually am going to do a different video about the Bible and why we need to read it and what it provides for you because the Bible is so precious. And, and I really, really want you to realize how important it is to read it. <clears throat> so, make sure you read the Bible every day. And you you can definitely start small if you want to even just one verse a day I'm telling you that will make so such a difference in your life all right um, and then the um, the next thing that we need to learn about is actually the memorial of Jesus so the reason why we want to talk about the memorial is because Jesus asks us to do 
<clears throat> do um, the communion in remembrance of him. So let's look at Luke twenty two nineteen. So when Jesus before Jesus um, went to be sacrificed and crucified, um, he had he had dinner with um, his disciples and he spoke about the bread being his flesh and the wine being his blood and these were all representations of us consuming him in a spiritual meaning as we are we are taking in um, we are we are accepting his spirit pretty much and we are accepting what he has done for us so um, so Luke 29 19 let's read it he took a he took a loaf gave thanks broke it and gave it to them saying this means my body which has been given in your behalf keep doing this in remembrance of me also he did the same with the cup after they had the evening meal saying this cup means the new covenant by virtue of my blood which is to be poured out in your behalf so you know this is actually what churches do um at on easter you know on easter time this is what easter is about it's remembering jesus's um crucifixion and sacrifice and then uh, celebrating his resurrection but we do this in remembrance that he gave his life for us. So, and he does, and he asks us to do this, keep doing this in remembrance of me. And that is so beautiful and precious. You know, to remember what he did for us in our place. And to just to honor that, you know. So when you're, so, you know, when Easter comes around and, and, you know, you're going to your church and they do that, that's what it means. And it's so important that you honor it with such reverence because it's so sacred, the sacrifice Jesus gave. So as Christians, we need to do this. I mean, we don't have to do it just once a year at Easter, you know, that's that's not what I do I like to do it whenever I want to but I do it with a very serious conscience because it's so sacred remembering the, the uh, sacrifice Jesus made for me and all of us um, and then of course um, moving on we need to join a congregation of God so we need to <clears throat> we need to find a church now this is important also because um, we need to find a family in God. We need to have brothers and sisters in God and there's so many reasons why and I'm probably going to put another video out about that too because um, it's really important to have, you know, other brothers and sisters in Christ with you. That's how we have edification from the, the church sermon we have encouragement from one another and um you know reproval um you know when we get off track we have people that can steer us back on the right track um and then we help each other out you know when we need help with anything and then we have people that pray for us and let me tell you you know when you have i mean you it's you're powerful praying on your own but when you got other brothers and sisters praying with you and for you you're gonna see the Lord move <laughs> it's amazing and Jesus asks us to um, you know love each other and stay together and and be united in union and in the, the New Testament talks a lot about that to stay in union with each other so um, I know it's kind of hard for some people I mean personally I you know, uh, for the longest time didn't really want to join a church because a lot of churches are, um, there's, there's things that happen that shouldn't, um, and it doesn't seem very godly at all, um, or Christ-like at all, but, um, and unfortunately we live in an imperfect world, so it's going to be that way. 
but um, you know, but it, it's really good to have other brothers and sisters to connect with. So I, it's encouraged that you find. Now you do need to find the right one, though, um, and by doing that, you need. You know, I would ask, I would pray, and ask God to lead me to the one that He wants me to be at, um, and then to to uh, make sure that they're reading from the Bible and that they're lining their sermons to the scriptures because we don't want to listen to stuff that we want to listen to or um, we don't want to listen to deception so we need to make sure and let me tell you you know it's really easy to get deceived so let's really make sure that our you know pastor is in church is actually reading and getting their their uh their proof from the Bible, right? Which is why I always like to involve reading the Bible and the scriptures because I, you know, if it doesn't fall in the scriptures, then yeah, I would be very careful about believing in that. Um, so just make sure when you're joining a church that is the one most important thing. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so let's look at Colossians 2, 6 through 7. We definitely need to root ourselves in the truth and abide in God's love. And the reason I bring this up is because, um, again, another mistake I made when I first started trying to um, walk in spirit and walk with God, I, <clears throat> I wasn't really rooted. I was trying to learn and get rooted, but because I wasn't, I wasn't really strong in the faith. Um, there were a lot of things that I ended up questioning. And when this happens, it's again easy for you to get deceived and deceived and um, pulled away as well through temptation. So if you're not um, now rooting, basically, I mean, you need to make sure that you are you are strong. Your faith is strong, just like a root is strongly held firmly to the ground. You need to make sure that your faith is strongly held in Jesus and in the truth. And that you're abiding, which means you're staying within God's love and His commandments. Which is that, what that means. To stay within His commandments. And Jesus teaches us that when you stay within His commandments, you abide in His love. And Jesus calls Himself the fruit... I'm um, sorry. Jesus calls Himself the vine. But we cannot produce fruit without the vine. So we need to make sure that we are being rooted in the truth and abiding in God's love. If we don't do this, like I said, it'll be so easy for us to fall into temptation, get pulled away into other, you know, whatever things and, and pulled away from God so easily. Um, so, make sure you believe deeply in what you stand for and why you live it every day and live it every day. Make sure you're exercising that, um, that you're work, like Paul says, working it out every day. You're, you're, you're producing fruit. You're being fruitful. And you're letting your light shine, let, letting God's light, the light of life, shine through you so that people can see. Um, so, yeah, John 15, 4 through 5 is a great scripture to read and help you get rooted and abide in God's love. Alright, so um, like we mentioned before, since you are serving God now, you are, you know, God is actually working within you to fulfill His will through you. So, this is um, explaining that we are living as a living sacrifice to Him. And what does that mean, living sacrifice? That means, again, we are denying ourselves, we're not serving ourselves anymore. Um, we have, you know, our old self has died, so that's sacrificed, and, you know, we are living a new creation for Him. So, <clears throat> we belong to Him, so we're serving Him the way He desires, and letting His will be fulfilled in us. So just make sure, as um, a follower of Christ, that you know that you're no longer living for your, your own desires, your own self. But God is what you're living for and who you're serving now. 
and he will bring you the desires of your heart. God takes care of us in abundance. It's amazing. More than we, better than we could have done our, to ourselves, for ourselves. Um, but, um, but, it, but that is something that you do have to understand is that we are living for him now, not ourselves. So Romans 12, 1 through 2 is a great scripture to uh, read about that. It makes God, it, it's a delight to him that we live Christ-like. So Romans 8, 29 see that Romans 8 29 <clears throat> because those whom he gave his first recognition he also ordained to be patterned after the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers so we need to make sure that we're living in, in Christ like um, and for whatever God's purpose is for us, that he wants to work through us. We may not always understand it, but we need to obey and, and uh, allow him to let his spirit flow and let his will flow in our lives. And Jesus is now our Lord, so he's, you know, he's um, Lord over our life. Um, so remember to obey him, John 14, 23. And then the last thing I'll leave you with as being a Christian is, again, kind of obvious, um, but I feel like a lot of people don't really um, take it serious. And some people, especially new um, people new in the faith, don't know how to. So I'm actually going to make a separate video as well about praying. But pray every day. Praying every day is so so extremely important when you're become when you're a Christian and you're trying to walk with God because prayer is our communication to God this is how this is how we communicate with God and this is also how we grow in the spirit this is the channel in which we speak through Holy Spirit to God and he speaks to us as well and we can read that in Romans 8 26 uh, 2 and so this is um prayer is how we obviously interact with God um, and he in Jesus you know Jesus prayed and Jesus asks us to pray and um, prayer God wants us to communicate with him yeah he's omnipotent he, he knows everything but it's again faith without actions like it it is it is so um, important to to you know do the act of prayer to speak to God and to actually grow relationship with him and it shows him that you are um, you know you're reaching out to him uh, this is you know prayer is how we ask for what we need and what we want so that God may give us what we ask um, Mark eleven twenty four. 24 says if you ask in my name um, I will do so this is how we we ask for what we need and and, um, you know, the Bible says if you don't have it's because you didn't ask. So we know that we, God will provide for us, but he wants us to ask, right? And then um, this is, prayer is also how we help each other. So just like we ask for ourselves, you know, pr uh, providing for um, our needs, this is also how we, how we help other people, you know, healing other people or helping them what whatever they need in their life we pray for each other we pray for them and that's how that is like the action for the for for um the faith of the holy spirit you know that that's pretty much the uh, so of course you know god gives us free will right he doesn't he doesn't um he's not going to He's not a dictator, okay? He's not going to hover over us and force us to do whatever. So even though we have, you know, these amazing gifts like the Holy Spirit, He's not going to sit there and control your life. By praying, we are pretty much asking, which gives Him permission, I guess you can say, because yes, God could, if He wanted to, roll you know rule controllingly but he's not that kind of god he's a loving graceful god kind god and he lets us make our decisions so by asking we're saying yes please give we're giving him permission yes please move in my life or move in my friend's life 
and that is giving the Holy Spirit the allowance to to move in into your life and and let God's uh, power come through so that's why prayer is so important um, and then you know James 5 16 um, that's another great scripture Luke 18 1 and Ephesians 6 18 also pray continuously pray continuously it's you know Paul especially talks about um, praying continuously so you know again like the Bible it's okay to start small but you know you'll want to go ahead and build up to um, praying as much as you can throughout the day and just keeping that channel open and that communication with God open um, and then you'll see how amazing it is to walk in spirit and that's actually the one of the keys to walking in spirit is praying continuously and then the other thing I wanted to leave you with is John 16 23 24 to, to remember to pray in Jesus' name Jesus says you ask in my name I will do so we need to pray in Jesus name so when we praying you know we finish our prayer that's why we say in Jesus name because remember Jesus name has power um, so this is my video about um, how to gain salvation and what to do now that you've gained salvation now that you have decided to become a follower of Christ Jesus and um, and become a Christian what this actually means this is this is um, this is your time to take up your cross and walk and that's what that means we can't just simply call ourselves Christian we can't just simply say yes I believe you know we have to actually live for Jesus as the living sacrifice and serve him the way God has desires us to so if you've decided the wonderful choice, the best choice, um, to make Jesus your Christ, your Savior, and the Lord of your life, to accept Him as Lord and a Savior of your life, um, I would like to invite you to a prayer of salvation so that we can, um, we can, we can accept Jesus and become a new creation in Him right now. So, just follow along with me, um, and in prayer and asking um, and talking to Jesus and, ta and asking to God. Thank you, Father God, for your Son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. And I thank you so much for forgi forgiving me of all my sins and taking my place. I ask you, please, I accept you to be my Savior and Lord of my life. And from here on, for the rest of my life and into eternity, I want to follow you. I want to live for you. Please help me to live for you and fulfill God's will through me. Thank you for your blood that you shed on the cross I ask you to believe I believe that you are the son of God and I believe that you did die for my sins but also that God has resurrected you and raised you from the dead and I ask that you raise me into new life with your spirit to become one with you Jesus and to live for you forevermore Thank you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for joining me today. Um, learning about the Christian faith and learning about Jesus and learning about God and also learning about what you can do to start living for God and helping others to live for God as well. Um, please share with everybody that you know. And if you have any questions, please do a comment. And actually, you can reach me um, on my email, too. So please, please reach out, and I will love to answer any questions. Um, thank you so much, and stay tuned for the next um, sermon. That we can learn more about believing in Jesus and improving our lives as Jesus' followers. Thank you. Have a blessed day.